Life Audio. But yeah. we were called to go out there and preach the gospel. We were called, like, we are the church, guys. Like, like mm-hmm. it's great we have community, we have a building, we have service, but we are the church. And and just imagine how many non-believers you come across that you're going to be the only church they're going to hear. Mm-hmm. And that's so powerful because you are planting that seed for that person. Don't I mean, should we not want salvation for everyone? Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Sparkle Speak. I'm your host, Catherine, and today we have on our very special guest, Kathy. Kathy is a passionate creative who shares about her new podcast called Bold and Beautiful. She also shares her transformative journey from Catholicism to New Age to where she is today in her faith, a woman passionate about evangelism and speaking life into others. We talk a lot about New Age and how that fits into Christianity, so auras, mediums, what her thoughts are on that and how it relates to faith. Kathy is a beautiful, bold, and inspiring person. And after a few words from our sponsors, I know you will enjoy hearing more of her story. The roof was completely gone. All of our memories being wiped away. The rain is what got 20 us. minutes of sheer terror. And you can feel it in your body. I watched the fire move down the canyon. The rumbling of the house. My son started screaming, we're going to die, we're going to die. In the name of Jesus, we are not going to die. At Samaritan's Purse, we bring spiritual and physical aid to hurting people around the world. We go into dangerous situations because in disaster, in disease, in war, Jesus calls us to love our neighbor, to heal the sick, feed the hungry, restore the broken. All who work and volunteer with Samaritan's Purse follow the example of Jesus. We go to serve, not to be served. And we go in Jesus' name. Join us at SamaritansPurse.org. That's SamaritansPurse.org. Do you have tattoos or do you shrink from the ink? And what does the Bible say about marking our bodies? We'll find out from Focal Point's Bible teacher, Pastor Mike Fabares, as he discusses this topic on Ask Pastor Mike. Text the word Mike to 833-989-3750 right now to get a direct link to listen to Ask Pastor Mike and get the truth about tattoos. Again, text Mike to 833-989-3750. Cool. Well, that kind of leads me into my first question I have for you, because you mentioned being born again and how, you know, you just have this like fire in you to just do everything Jesus. So I want to hear your story and you can share as much or little as you want about this. But like, when did you first start identifying yourself as a Christian or how did you first come to know God? Yeah, so I was raised Catholic, uh, daughter of a deacon. So uh you know, religious background, raised in the church, really tried to be a good Catholic my whole life. And I just remembered, you know, just, you know, not really resonating like with it. Like I didn't like going to church and I thought I was a bad person because I didn't like going to church and I would just pray the rosary. I would, you know, do all the religious prayers. And I still like, didn't feel the connection. I'd had my favorite saints I'd prayed to still like, I just didn't feel, I felt like something was missing. And that was just something that's just me personally. Um, but it kind of led me into this, uh, I guess, journey where I felt like I knew God was speaking to me. Um, as a child, I was always uh, a seer. So I would see things and visions and dreams and that kind of was like led into even where the enemy tapped into it. And I'd have like reoccurring nightmares. And so I didn't know what that was. I just thought, again, I was a bad person. I was a bad kid and I'd have dreams of Satan and, you know, chasing me crazy things. And I just didn't know how to get out of that. And I had my, I told my parents, I remembered, and they took me to this lady who was kind of like an intercessor and she like prayed over me for a week. And then eventually those nightmares stopped, you know, but it was 
uh, and I had seen Jesus actually in that last nightmare <laughs> that turned into a that dream. So, and I remembered him, like me running toward him and he was in the light. And so it was just, it was pretty powerful. And I, like, I add a lot of that in my testimony and you'll see when I release that as well, like in more detail, but uh, that kind of just, you know, spiraled into my childhood, uh, just again, in the Catholic church. And in 2015, I kind of just became very curious and it all really does, I think, start with curiosity, I think. But for me, I wanted to know who like created Catholicism, like where did it even come from? I wanted to know the history of it. And I came across this documentary. I just really still feel this was so God led because it just came and fell on my lap. I feel like one day and I was like, well, what's this? But it was a documentary um, of Constantine and how he like spoke about Catholicism and how, where it came from. And so for me, I, you know, again, it was just something that resonated. I was like, okay, well, I, I kind of don't know if this is pagan or if this is of God. And I really, again, not trying to shun anyone who's in the faith. I know a lot of Catholics that are just really faithful people, but for me personally, it was not leading me um, on a right path. And I wanted to start exploring uh, different churches. Um, and I thought it was just my Catholic church. So I said, okay, well, I'll just, you know, try a different Catholic church. And I did. And again, it was just, I didn't feel, I didn't feel God. Uh, and so I, again, it was just like a lot of religion, tradition, rituals, you know, and I just, it didn't feel like I was, there was no relationship there. Mm. So my sister and I were both on this journey together and we both decided to really explore other churches and de different denominations. And we came across a non-denomination church uh, called Kensington. And I didn't know what I was going to expect walking in. To be honest with you, I was a little fearful because I did see a cross on the church. So I'm like, I don't know, do they even worship Jesus? <laughs> so I grew up uh, going there too, by the way. I know oh, we didn't talk about that before. So that's oh, funny. I love that. That, yeah. that was the church really that I started going to. So I remember walking into Kensington and feeling the love and just feeling so welcomed. Um, I don't think I've ever felt that in church and I was not judged on what I was wearing, what I look like. I didn't have to be a certain way. I was just going there as I am. Right. So, and I listened to my first worship service there and I felt the Holy Spirit fall on me. It was the first time I've ever felt this. And I didn't even know it was Holy Spirit. I just thought it was a feeling. Uh, but it was the best way I could explain it. It was like an anointing oil, like from the top of my head, just flowing to the soles of my feet. And it was just like on fire. And it was so warm. And I just felt so much peace and joy in his presence. And this is, was the feeling. This is what I've been wanting. I wanted that like connection with him. And I didn't realize I could get that through like Christian mu worship music. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so it was just really powerful. And then I just knew I wanted more of that. It was so, I wanted, I tasted it and I wanted more. And I'm like, this is amazing. I just want to live in this. And so during this time, I, I think the enemy knew the path I was going on and he kind of wanted to throw me a curveball, I guess. And, uh, I got introduced to new age during this time. And a lot of it is just spirituality. And, you know, I really thought it was of God. I didn't know any better because I didn't know scripture yet. I was still learning a lot. And I mean, I'm, I'm like a baby Christian right now. So I was just thinking, I just believe in Jesus and that's enough. Mm. And so 
new age kind of just threw a different direction in my path. And uh, yeah, so for that, at that time in my life, I got involved in some deep stuff. Uh, anything you can think of new age, tarot cards, crystals, uh, sage, uh, manifesting, which by the way, I know is now a counterfeit of prayer. <laughs> so all the little things I didn't realize the enemy really just, just takes to steal, kill and destroy. Right. Cause that's what he does. And he just counterfeits everything that God created. Cause he can't create. Mm. And I mean, along learning that, you know, along the way is when I realized it. But uh, yeah, so new age kind of took me down a different path for a couple of years. And it wasn't until I had a moment while using my tarot cards, I was like, I felt a demonic presence. And I kept like flipping through my tarot cards. And it was like this death card kept coming up over and over and over again. And I'm like, what is going on? This is, this is so demonic. It just doesn't feel right. And I could hear in the spirit like an echoing laughter of like evil wow. and there was just something like I just like rose <laughs> and I remember just taking and these were my angel tarot cards by the way <laughs> so wow. I'm thinking these are supposed to be the holiest ones um in my religious mind right because I grew up so religious that I still had a religious spirit not knowing I think mm-hmm. the truth. so I remember taking these cards tossing them and I thought it was just those cards I didn't know any different then I had an encounter with a woman this was so powerful from Facebook marketplace and I remember like buying this cabinet from her and she was like an old lady sweet old lady and was like, oh, well, what are you going to use this cabinet for? And I'm like, oh, you know, my tarot cards and my crystals and my sage. And I thought that was such a normal conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and this woman looked at me, I kid you not. And she was like, and was like, you stay away from me. You who practice witchcraft. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, no, no, ma'am, I believe in Jesus. She's like, oh no, she's probably thinking I'm so crazy. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, this girl does not know Jesus. And she's like, no, no. She's like, you stay away from me. And she literally ran back into her home. Wow. Like, I I didn't know what to like even make of it. I just like remember sitting in my car after and I was like, and I could just, I know it was the enemy, but he was like, she's just judging you. Yeah. And I remembered that familiar voice and I was like, yeah, she's just judging me, but there was a conviction. Mm. And that's because I felt like I know I still had the Holy spirit in Mm me. Uh, I just hadn't fully surrendered, but I know I had him in me. I had the conviction and then I just didn't entertain the conviction because it was too much to think that I was wrong. It was like my pride getting in the way. And then the Lord just kept revealing so many things to me, really. That was one of many. But then I encountered uh, the lady who actually created the angel cards, the tarot cards, um, Doreen Virtue. She did a video coming in, came out that she locked new age for Jesus. And that was like powerful for me. So I was like, wait, I thought I was a Christian. I thought I... I thought I'm so confused. I thought I could do this and that like, Mm -hmm. you know, and she made it very clear to me. Um, And we went through like Deuteronomy. If I could just like, yeah, but it was Deuteronomy 18. And, and she said, there shall not be found any among you who make his son or his daughter pass through the fire or one who practices witchcraft. So that was kind of like, whoa, like, and I used to really call myself a witch, like a white witch. So mm. I was like, I'm a good one now. Like mm-hmm. I don't do spells or anything, but I'm a good witch. But because I still identified as that, it really like caught my eye. And I said, wait, like what I'm doing is not of God. And she said, no. 
it is an abomination to the Lord and those who practice it will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm. That was it for me. I was done. Signed, sealed, and delivered. <laughs> I yeah. Read so many more scriptures after that. But um, at that point, I did call myself a Christian. I did identify as a Christian. But I will say I was basically just very lukewarm at best. This is so fascinating. <laughs> I I have so many questions for you about this new age stuff because it's actually a topic we haven't really talked about on our show yet. And mm-hmm. um but it's such a huge part of our culture these days. Mm-hmm. And I think especially with podcasts becoming so um popular, I mean yeah. I have so much more access to learning about new age concepts, which isn't really something I knew a lot about growing up because I, I grew up in kind of a, I would say like predominantly Christian secular like area. So a lot, if anyone was anything, they were usually Christian or some sort of it, or just didn't believe in anything. Um, yeah. But new age wasn't really something I was like around a lot, but lately I feel like crystals and, auras and it's yeah it's a thing now and so I've it's it's everywhere and it's very deceiving because a lot of people who identify as Christians are in it a lot yeah for sure and so I guess my question or maybe like a topic we could keep on on is like what are your thoughts on that? Like if someone is maybe a spiritual person like you, but maybe having a hard time finding their place in the Christian world, like what does your gift look like in the Christian world? Yeah. And, you know, kind of goes back to what I was saying that, you know, the enemy cannot create anything. And so, you know, I thought I was psychic. I thought I was a medium. I would speak to dead people I thought it was like a gift and I had no idea that these were just demons Mm. and I was messing with these demons and I had welcomed them through new age and I had again just no idea what I was doing again it just talks about in scripture that you know mediums will not inherit the kingdom of God all of that so I'm like then what am I (laughs) you know I have all these gifts I I thought it was from God and the enemy has just distorted it. And Mm. it wasn't until I learned scripture, got in the word, understood, I did have a gift of prophecy. I did have a gift. And I use that now today to help people like come closer to Jesus, just draw them in. And, you know, I evangelize and, you know, I love using that gift now to evangelize. You know, I was uh, in Ferndale, Michigan uh, one day and evangelizing. This was maybe a month ago when I was visiting and I came across a girl who was very like, she looked like she was very new agey. She was covered in new age tattoos and beautiful girl. And I just know like a lot of people in new age really have a pure heart they really are very spiritual good people like with good intentions they just have like this gifting and they just feel shunned in the church Mm -hmm. so I feel like they just resort to this new age religion because they feel accepted Mm -hmm. and with this girl I remember seeing her and she was just a sweet beautiful girl. And I just said, Lord, what do you want to reveal about her? Like, what do you want me to know about her that I can speak truth over her? And he just showed me these visions of her being a creative artist. Uh, I saw jewelry. I saw all these like little things. Like she was like, you know, like she should be an entrepreneur running her own business, doing jewelry or something. And I'm like, okay, this sounds, it will sound crazy to you because you don't know this girl, but I'm trusting that in the Lord that he's giving me these visions for her. And so I'm talking to her, I introduce myself and I just, you know, just give her words of encouragement, tell her how beautiful she is. She really was just a stunning girl. And I just told her, you know, I, you know, I relate to, you know, some of, the tattoos you have to kind of get a 
her comfortable with the conversation. So she's like, oh, wow, she like likes some of my things, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'm just like, you know, I just wanted to give you a, like um, a prophetic word from the Lord. And she's like, oh, okay, you know, kind of thing. And was like thrown off about it. But I said, you know, I just want you to know that Jesus says you are so beautiful to him and that he gifted you to be an artist that he sees you running your own business in jewelry. Uh, I don't know if that resonates with you, but you know, this is just, these are just some visions I've seen and, you know, and she's like, wow, I actually do make my own jewelry and I really like enjoy it. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay. I did not expect that, <laughs> but yeah. the Lord. And it's not like she converted over to Christianity that day, but that was a planted seed. Mm -hmm. and I've as I've grown in my faith I've just learned like we're not here to save people we're here to plant seeds and the Lord is going to work in that in them like through them mm -hmm. and so I know like I, that girl probably maybe went home and was like who is this Jesus that knows this about me yep. and I'm supposed to have my own business like she's feeling encouraged and she's like I thought Jesus was this and this he just said that he that thought I was beautiful. And and she's gonna believe that now because I just spoke a prophetic word of something he really only knew about her and only he did. Yes. So again, that is the gift of prophecy. And it really is powerful, even mostly for non-believers, to be honest. Um, I think it was made for those for those people who don't believe, uh, so that you know, Christ could just like really just plant his seed in him and then they, they could grow. So I don't know, but yeah. that's kind of, I've turned that gift of where I thought I was a psychic to a prophetic gift. So those who, who say they're psychic, identify a new age, who speak into that world and say, I have these gifts and well, you do, they are gifts. Absolutely. And they're from God, whether or not you serve the God of heaven or not, mm -hmm. they are still gifts from God. You know, yeah. they are his gifts. And once you fully understand who God is and how much he really loved you and designed you so creatively to have these gifts, you're going to start wanting to walk in them for his glory, because it's only through him that you have these gifts and they're only going to get greater through him. So when you start operating, you know, in the kingdom and through the Holy Spirit, you're just, you're just, you're no longer your own, really. You're just, the Lord is just working through you and trusting that, um, you know, what he's doing. But yeah, that's just kind of my, yeah, on, on that. No, thank you so much for sharing that. I just think your story's um, like unique in that sense. Um and it's just so beautiful. And I think it's so relevant for the culture today. Cause like I said, every, not everybody, but a lot of people just think it's normal to, you know, Oh, go read some tarot cards and then go to church the next day. And for you to be so bold yeah. to say, no, like these are not mm -hmm. spirits of the Lord. Like these are dangerous spirits that can lead you. I think that's really, really, um, great of you to share your perspective in that. And I, I did want to add just one other thing too. I, yeah. I totally um, agree with you when you say that sometimes these prophetic words are oftentimes for the non-believer because it just amazes them and wows them to think, whoa, mm -hmm. like who is this Jesus? And it reminds me of the woman at the well, that yes. you know famous yeah. biblical story where like Jesus knew her and spoke a powerful word to her. And she yeah. said, oh my gosh, who is this man who knows everything I ever did? He knows my heart. He knows my story. And right then and there, she ran back to her village and just mm. says, I'm going to cry right now. Cause I literally, me. I know <laughs> I was, I'm going to cry because I was just revealed to me even just days ago as in prayer, uh, like I was praying and fasting and I'm like, Lord, who am I to you? And he gave me that vision of that woman at the well. So that's like, you're going to make me cry. Now the Lord is speaking through you right now to me, like as confirmation. Oh. I'm like, oh, like, and even for believers, mm -hmm. like prophecy is amazing because it encourages us, yes. right? And yes. it really does 
edifies us and helps us like be stronger in our faith. But like, I was like, wow, Lord, I'm like, yeah, you're that girl who ran Mm -hmm. when you saw me and told the world. And yeah, so that he just, he calls me his, he told me I'm his bold beauty and I just love him so much. Oh, that's so beautiful. Good father. Yeah. Yeah. And I love, I love, love, love that you're surrendering your gifts and your, uh, just the precious gifts that he's given you, how he's uniquely made you. And you're saying, God, I believe that you made me this way and here I am, use me however. And that's so amazing. I actually became a Christian because of a prophetic word. Um, I had a, I had a pretty strong Christian foundation, but kind of similar to you. I, I believed, but I hadn't yet surrendered my life Mm -hmm. to the Lord fully. And um, somebody to this day, like I will always give this guy so much credit because we were at a Christian conference and he felt God telling him to give me a message and he bravely shared it with me. And that conversation forever changed my life because from that conversation, I was like, oh my goodness, this is a direct message to me from God. And I ran up to the worship center that we were all worshiping the new year. And I just completely surrendered my life to Jesus right then and there. And it was because somebody was bold enough to just relay what God was asking him to tell me. And so I think Mm -hmm. you never know when you can change someone's life just by being obedient. It's, it's so true. You just kind of have to step out into faith. And, you know, there's been times where I've given a prophetic word and I'm like, uh, the people are like, I'm not, you know, I don't know, like, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's actually for me or whatever, like it doesn't like resonate with them, but, you know, just stay encouraged and know, like, you know, like you just, you don't know if that person either it's for them or maybe someone they do know, I don't know, but like, just kind of being obedient, like whatever the Lord asks you to do, just do it. Uh, it's nothing pleases God more than your obedience. Just keep those people in your prayers. I still yeah. keep that new age girl in my prayers. Like, yeah, she, like, I don't know. There was just, she has an anointing on her life and I know it and I feel it with her. And so when I ask God who prayed for me, Lord, that helped me get saved because I didn't have a lot of strong believers in my mm. family that really had a relationship with the Lord. Like, who prayed for me? Because I'm like, mm. I don't know how I got saved. How mm-hmm. in that moment, in that moment, the Lord gave me a vision of that old lady who sold wow. me the cabinet. I'm gonna cry right now. Sold me that cabinet and called and ran back into her home. He showed me a vision of her in her prayer closet, praying for me. I kid you not. <laughs> she, he, um, showed me a vision of her. And I was like, not expecting that vision. You know, I was like, of all the people, like, I thought maybe my, my, my aunt, mom, maybe my dad, I yeah. don't know. Old, that older, that old sweet Christian lady in her prayer closet, praying for me, mind you, she had like my first and last name. She had my photo. She had me on marketplace. So she knew who I was. <laughs> And I just saw her interceding for me in that vision. And I still am like digging through like my uh, Facebook, like marketplace messages to see if I could find that woman. Cause I really just want to connect with her again and just say, thank you so mm-hmm. much for like still loving on me, even though I was in that, like, ugh. yeah, thank you for sharing that because it just goes to show like our listeners just you know, keep praying for those people. You just truly never know what God mm-hmm. is going to do. And he's, he's so amazing in that way. And I do have just one last question about this topic for you. I'm sorry, I'm going a little no, off so, script, but it's so good. It's such good stuff. And I feel yeah. like people don't talk about it enough, but um, there is the verse first John four, one, I have it pulled up here. It says, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God for many mm-hmm. false prophets have gone out into the world. And I feel like that verse like really sums up a lot of what we're talking about and yeah, how it can I be think. kind of confusing. Cause there's so many messages like shifting around our brains all the time. But I guess for you, because you get 
um, a lot of, you know, spiritual insight. How do you discern the voices to know whether something's from God or not? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, something I actually had struggled with for a long time and it really, it just, uh, it took a lot of time and honestly, Lena is my mentor. So we'll get into that later, but she really was someone I kind of go to about questions like that. And, um, I really just try to trust like, okay, uh, I know like the enemy is not going to speak life into me. That's like the best way to, to kind of explain it. I know the enemy. So if I'm feeling discouraged or if there's anything that is causing me stress or anxiety, I know it's not from God. Mm -hmm. And if it gives me peace and if it if, if that voice is telling me to forgive, if that voice is telling me to still love that person, if that voice is telling me to walk into faith or obedience or to do something that maybe I'm a little uncomfortable with, but I know it's going to glorify God. It is from God. And I had struggled with it a lot, uh, even in this past year, to be honest, until I finally came to terms with like, okay, what are my thoughts? What are, are God's thoughts? What are the enemy's thoughts? <laughs> like, what are these voices? And the one thing I will say that has helped me more and more is I will pray every morning and I'll just like put my hands on my head. I'll be like, Lord, cancel every voice, every feeling, every thought that is not from God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that day will flow. Mm -hmm. And if I felt like the enemy was trying to tap in again, Lord, <laughs> cancel mm -hmm. every thought. Every, and I'll just like really just oh, like really just try and trust in the Lord and controlling my thoughts and knowing like if obviously you're being tempted that's the enemy um if you know he's he's leading you down a dangerous path or again discouraging you it's the enemy yeah and absolutely and that actually leads me into my last question I have for you and I would love to talk to you about your podcast so you said you feel like God has kind of asked you to start a show and so can you tell us like about it? How did you come up with the name? What are you planning on talking about? Why are you doing it? Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So, uh, so I'm having dinner in my apartment in Dallas and I get like an instant like download as I'm having dinner. You need a podcast. And I knew that was Holy Spirit talking because sometimes I feel like he's just he can be funny. So I'm like, okay, that's funny. I'm like, yeah, that's, I mean, cool idea, but I don't think that's for me. I don't know anything about a podcast. I don't know. I don't like being in front of people. I don't like speaking. I don't know. It's not for me. So I'm sitting here like kind of like rejecting it. Right. But at the same time, I was like, it does sound like a cool idea, <laughs> but I just don't know if it's for me. And then I continue to have dinner. And then I started just kind of trying to entertain the thought. I'm like, okay, what would I even call it? Like being funny, really just, I <laughs> was just an authentic conversation with the Holy Spirit. And he was like, instant download again, bold and beautiful. I'm like, oh, that's a nice one. Okay, Holy Spirit, I like it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but you know, it's probably taken because that is such a catchy like phrase. Like, how is it? How would it not be taken? Mm -hmm. So, again, I didn't in entertain it after that, but I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, the next day, I was like, again, I, I, it had to be the Holy Spirit because he was like, you should check if it's taken, <laughs> like kind of thing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm actually curious if it is. You know? <laughs> And I went into like podcasters and I was like, I don't know, is this how we search? Let's see how I could find out. And it was available to use. And I was, that was a, that was the moment where I'm like, I was like kind of hoping it wasn't available. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not available. See, so I can't do it. Mm. Um, but it was available and I was convicted at that moment. I'm like, oh man, I have to do it now. <laughs> I really don't want to do this. This is another 
uncomfortable like phase of my life I don't feel like I want to do and you're just making me go out there so I'm just gonna baby steps and start creating it started really just like learning a lot about it talking to people talking to you um and people just really trying to encourage me and I've really it's crazy because people have always told me you're so bold cat you're so bold for speaking like I could never speak like that like I don't know I feel like I would offend people so I just thought like how fitting the name bold and beautiful like and it's funny because I think it was like um I think it was a soap opera from my mom used to watch is the bold and beautiful I don't know if you've ever heard of it no it was like an old school like with the young and the restless I remember her watching it it's just funny but that was like the first thing that came to my mind and so I was like had to be taken but I guess the bold and beautiful was but not bold and beautiful so I thought it was kind of cool That's awesome. so yeah so I uh, kind of just started it up and I am in the middle of trying to record my first episode, but you can find me on Instagram at bold and beautiful underscore podcast. And I will have a link to the podcast um, in my bio. Awesome. I'm yeah. excited to listen to it. I will definitely be listening to it. I think yeah. um, just your story, like I said, the, the, the different facets of spirituality and faith and Christianity that you've walked through. I think you have a lot to offer people just with your own experiences. And obviously as God continues to give you, you know, information and words of encouragement to share with people, I think it's going to be great. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of Sparkle Speak. As always, you can find us at sparklefaith.com or head over to our partners at lifeaudio.com where you can hear more podcasts just like this one. Don't forget to check out our show notes to find all of our social media. And as always, don't forget to rate, subscribe, like, share this with people that you think would enjoy hearing. It really helps us more than you realize and allows us to keep doing what we love to do, spreading the hope and love of Christ with others. So thank you so much for being here and we will see you next episode. Bye. This is the smell of the leftover tuna fish sandwich you left in your lunchbox over the weekend in a wimpy trash bag. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. <sighs> and this is the smell of that same sandwich in a hefty, ultra strong trash bag. Hefty, hefty, hefty. <sighs> Ah, smell the difference? Hefty Ultra Strong has Arm & Hammer with continuous odor control, so no matter what's inside your trash, hmm, you can stay one step ahead of stinky. And for bigger jobs, try the superior strength of Hefty Large Black Bags. 